Hey, good morning, CT Mitchell here, and I wanted to put up a, a fairly quick video uh, about my writer's journey. Uh, it's a question I get asked a fair bit about, and it's just dawned on me that I've been giving a lot of talks, particularly into um, uh, author groups, uh, book clubs. Uh, I've also been out to retirement villages, and I've given this um, speech quite often, and it just re I just realized that probably you, my online readers, maybe not have heard the story before. So I wanted to try and give a shortened version because the actual talk itself goes for about an hour and uh, that may just bore you here sitting online. So I want to cut it down and just, I suppose, explain how I got into becoming a crime writer um, you know, some two years ago now, two and a half years ago. Uh, and the summary is that uh, I started as a crime writer due to my experiences of being a real estate agent. So let me explain that. Um, I grew up in North Queensland, which is um, oh, about uh, 12 or probably 1,800 kilometres from where I currently live now in a place called Cairns. Uh, I was the only son. Uh, my dad was an accountant uh, and my mum stayed home. So I, I grew up in the, uh, in the 60s and, and, and 70s, etc. in a fairly typical Australian kind of family, um, you know, where dad went out to work, mum stayed home. Dad was very, very proud of the fact that he, you know, he was an accountant and whatever, and he wanted to, I suppose, impale that upon me uh, to become an accountant as well. And so when I was 17, I toddled off down to the big smoke here in Brisbane uh, to study accounting, um, which, you know, I kind of liked. I kind of wanted to be like my dad, obviously. So I, you know, enrolled and, you know, got accepted, etc., etc. But it never really floated my boat. And um, towards the end of my um, degree, I had this passion for wanting to get out and actually get a job. And so a job arose where I became a, a share market trader for a, um, a stockbroking firm here in Brizzy. And it was in 1980, and it was a mining boom uh, here in Australia. And Oh, even though I was inexperienced, I wasn't to handle the mining shares. I handled all the industrial shares uh, that were traded. And myself and another operator from the firm would go across each day. We used to trade for three hours a day, uh, buying and selling the shares on behalf of the clients of the firm. And, you know, I kind of thought I was going okay uh, until I came across this lady who wanted to sell some, uh, what they call SEQ, which was an electricity firm, SEQ, 6% um, preference shares. And she only had 67 of these things. And so that in itself was a very, very difficult task. And you had to go through what we call an odd lot, odd lot broker. And there was only one of them on the floor. And if he didn't have any clients wanting to buy, then obviously you were going to make no sale. So every day I'd come back from the trading floor and my boss used to say, have I sold uh, Mrs. Barrington's shares? And unfortunately I hadn't. But after a week, he kind of got sick of me not being able to sell the shares. And uh, on the Monday, basically, it was, uh, thanks very much, don't come back. And so my dreams of being a, a share trader and working on the big exchanges and seeing all the cash flowing around had just gone overnight. And now I was unemployed. And I decided, what I, you know, what was I going to do? Obviously, I couldn't probably get back into share broking. So I saw an ad in a newspaper to become a real estate agent. And it uh, read how to make $50,000 a year. And back in 1980, that was a lot of money. And so I got on board, joined the company, went out, made some sales, and you know, rose through that firm, became the sales manager, control teams, and all that kind of good stuff. And I really, really enjoyed it, but it, it gave me my first exposure to the criminal world because we used to have a preferred uh, lawyer uh, that did a lot of our contracts. In fact, he lived in the building directly above our office. And so uh, it was a great guy, by the way. Uh, he uh, very, very charismatic, but he seemed to attract clients that were not so reputable. And they used to sort of trottle past my window virtually every few days. And I used to uh, get to know some of these sort of people via, you know, reading them in the newspapers and whatever. And as I said, they were major, major crime figures, particularly from the Sydney underworld. 
But it always fascinated me uh, as to what, you know, they did. Uh, because again, not being a part of that world, I was interested in, you know, how they, you know, traded and did business and all that kind of stuff. And so I used to constantly spend time upstairs with the lawyer having a bit of a chat. But, you know, he was fairly coy, uh, understandably so. Uh, but it just piqued my interest in, in crime and, and that kind of business. Later on, um, when I was out, you know, sharing a flat, I, um, one of my flatmates had a uh, acquaintance, we shall say, who was very, very high up in the Queensland Law Society. And uh, he had been a barrister uh, in, in his past life. And again, he would come over and pontificate some fantastic stories of how he had criminal organisations employing him uh, to basically get them off major cases, major drug busts, etc. And again, the stories just kind of resonated and I was really, really interested in, in what, you know, again, they did. So my attraction to the crime thing just kept on growing. Later in the, in, the, in the late 80s, I was on the Gold Coast uh, selling in a major resort there, which was a gated community, which basically meant that no one could get in. It was a safe and secure environment. It also meant that it was an absolute attraction magnet for criminals because the only people who could really get in were those who were, um, you know, the police uh, or, or some, you know, court order or something to that nature. So again, inside the resort, I got to rub shoulders with a lot of criminals and uh, one particular couple used to always amaze me I would watch them every single day go out onto the golf course uh, play golf all day uh, cruise down to the shops in their fantastic brand new red Porsche um, I would be taking clients in around at night and eating in uh, the exclusive country club that we had at that resort and I would always see this couple dining there and I used to sit back and think you know how do these guys you know, make so much money that they are now out there enjoying life and really think. And again, it turned out that one night the police raided uh, the resort. This couple were taken away and as it all boiled down, they had committed a, a major fraud in the United States and were basically hiding here uh, under a pseudonym name. So um, the, the crime thing kind of, I said, resonated with me. And from there, you know, I called upon my past to where I was actually reading a lot of crime novels and uh, Agatha Christie was obviously my favorite and I loved all her kind of novels and it just sort of evolved for me so that in 2015 when I decided I was going to write I suppose it became a bit of a no-brainer. I um, thought about getting in, I had a bit of research in the marketplace, you know romance is definitely the biggest uh, genre within the writing fraternity and I thought, hey, you know, I've been a bit of a smoothie all my life. Maybe I could write some romance. But, you know, I soon kind of realized in my own head that men don't make great romance writers. It's really uh, a women's uh, genre. They seem to have a better sense and touch. And I'm sure all the ladies who are watching that would agree. And so uh, they, um, you know, control that market. And so I decided to give that a move and, and go into the, into the crime genre. And I said, I called upon... Um, all my knowledge and my crime things and this is how I began writing my very first book. Uh, so that's a little bit about my journey. I just wanted to share initially how I got started. Uh, we can blame uh, real estate for that. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody in, in real estate is obviously a criminal. Uh, there are a lot of fantastic people out there. But I just seem to uh, have had in my early days a lot of attractions to that sort of uh, um, kind of person and they just fuel my interest and excitement. I don't know about your own careers, what you've ever done in the past, uh, you know, who were your influences? Maybe you had some people there that, you know, when you grew up, uh, influenced you in, in taking a certain path that made you become a nurse or a doctor, uh, maybe even a lawyer, maybe you wanted to help criminals just like uh, I was wanting to write about them. So I hope you have uh, enjoyed that little bit of a brief story. That was my uh, beginning of my writing journey. It still is. I love what I do. I love writing my books and I love having the opportunity to go out there and entertain you. And I look forward to you know, improving my craft and hoping that uh, you're getting some enjoyment from my books. You have a great day. I look forward to catching up with you again really soon. Bye for now.